Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of Caravan of Garbage, where we are wrapping up the G.I. Joe duology. Pork chop sandwiches, folks. You know it. Remember that? Uh, no. Remember those videos? I don't remember anything. Remember those videos? They got the redubbed G.I. Joe videos? I haven't seen those. It goes like, pork chop sandwiches. Pork chop sandwiches. Oh, shit. Get the fuck out of here. And he's running into a burning house or whatever. I don't know your 2007 memes, Mason. All right, all right. I'll show you later. You're going to love it. Bet there's one in the video. I bet Ben put it in. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> If you know me, if you know this meme that Mason's talking about, let us yeah. know below. We're also we're not doing the animated movie. We might come back to it. If Snake Eyes gets another prequel, we'll come back. Yeah, okay, great. Anyways, leave a like if you want, because this time around, Stephen Summers is out. John M. Chu, director, is in. Terrific. I feel like for this one, they were hoping for a Fast Five style reboot by adding The Rock. By the way, sure. an, another The Mummy franchise alumni. Yeah, that's right. If you don't mind me saying the so. The Scorpion King himself. Exactly. Well, what's interesting about this movie is that the last one had a cast of colourful characters. Mm. And in this one, they're like, okay, what we're going to do, we're going to kill some of the Joes off camera. Mm -hmm. We're going we're to kill some of them on camera. Are and you talking about Marlon Wayans? Off camera, definitely off camera. Yeah. Uh, Channing's Tatum on camera, and so they're going to they're going to replace all of them with a new core group, which is obviously mm -hmm. Dwayne the Rock Johnson, yep. Adrian Pilecki, that's right, uh, a, a very uh, common alumni in this particular series of videos. Someone who I think does a great job with some very bad material sometimes. Yeah. And the third member, uh, which is a cardboard cutout of a, a Target model, <laughs> you know, from a Target catalog, maybe. Yeah, that guy. You know that guy. He was nearly Superman. Huh. He was in uh, George Miller's Justice League. He was Superman. He's also in Shazam. Huh. Yeah. He's in the super well, family. Well, I'm glad he's been in other things because in this, what well, the fascinating thing to me is not only did they replace Channing's Tatum, the mm. very charismatic Channing's Tatum, yes. with whoever this guy's name is. I'm not going to look it up and I will never learn it. I think it's DJ Codrona. Huh. Not only did they replace Channing's, they decided to put a scene at the start of the movie to show how charismatic he is and how well he integrates with the rest yes. of the cast and then knock him off and then just replace him with this silhouette of a man. I have a theory. Go on. I think... The studio thought that Channing Tatum was running out of juice. Please, Channing's Tatums. <laughs> Channing's Tatums, right? And they thought, we'll slip him a couple mil, we'll get him in for a day. Yeah, yeah, He'll yeah. He'll be the bridge between this movie and the last. But yeah. here's the thing. Physically the bridge. They wanted to have <laughs> they wanted him to have to, to hold two pieces of a suspension. While bridge the rock collided run, over run, him. Runs over the top. <laughs> Just big heavy boots That's just right. digging into it. But there him. seems to be little to no information on this. Yeah. Like well, he didn't initially even want to do the first one, yeah. really. So my theory is that they needed something from the previous movie and they thought, why not? We'll sure. get him cheap. But here's the thing. In 2012, a year before this movie came out. And they paid him a million dollars and then they're like, oh, wait, we had this gun. This inanimate <laughs> gun. We could have used that to bridge the two movies. Exactly. We paid a million dollars for this man. <laughs> Go on. So in 2012, the year before this movie came out, he was the second highest paid actor behind Robert Downey Jr. He made 60 million with movies like The Vow, the uh, the the rom com or whatever it is. It's a, his wife <laughs> loses his memory, and then Channing Tatum has to be like, "You're married to me." Nice, I'm Channing Tatum. Is that what you want? Yeah, yeah, that's cool, yeah. man. Yeah. Uh, then he did Magic Mike and 21 Jump Street, and then Ooh. they went, "Shit." Yeah. We've only had him in for a day and he was quite charismatic and it works really well with The Rock, but I guess we have to kill him off. Speaking of, we've talked privately, Mason, about how we don't often talk about what the story is. We've never talked privately, James. <laughs> That's true. It's all on-air content. So I figure for these videos, we should talk a little bit about the story and I'm going to give you a prompt. Okay. So at the start of this movie, they give you a bit of a kind of a, a catch up from the previous movie. It's been they, four years and apparently four years of stuff has stuff has been happening. They said at the end of the nanomite wars. Yeah, right. It wasn't really a war. It was like half a day, maybe. Well, that's what I'm thinking. I'm Somebody ran through a shopping complex with a big green glowing <laughs> bazooka or whatever that's happened. Right. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. They should. <laughs> I think have, it was a rocket launcher. They, Apologies. they should have called it the the one green bazooka incident. <laughs> it's like the name of an offspring, offspring album or something. Because the thing about the last one is the last one ended yep. with, uh, as you mentioned previously. Uh, Rex says, mm -hmm. hey, I'm the Cobra Commander now. And then he immediately gets arrested. Yep. Him and Destro, they get thrown into prison. Yep. But at the start of this one, the thing you said about the nanomite wars, and clearly there were some casualties, including Marlon Wayans. Yes. Like, but when Storm Shadow and Firefly in this movie break Cobra Commander out of prison, yep. it's a different prison. Yes. And then Cobra Commander's like, ah, Firefly, my old buddy. We've been war buddies for ages. But he was, Cobra Commander was just a scientist in the last one. That was, I think you've hit on something, because I'm like, why does everybody know this guy? Yeah, and also when, and then Cobra Commander's like, well, off to my off to my secret headquarters, and he goes there and it's got all the Cobra logos and yeah. all this sort of stuff, which weren't in the last one, and nope. like all new tech and stuff. So what I think happened is, 
Cobra Commander and Destro got broken out of the prison at the end of the first one. They got new outfits and like new logos and they participated in the nano. They did a wars. rebrand. Yeah, yeah, they did a little Much like the movie G.I. Joe retaliation. Yeah, yeah. They got a new typeface for their logo. <laughs> then Cobra Commander and Destro got thrown back into a different prison. Yeah. This one, uh, Warden by Wally Goggs, Mr. Love Walton him. Goggins. Fan. I right. put him in my uh my, my segment at the end where I'm like, here's some things I want I, I didn't talk about. But just as Walton Goggins is in this one. Pretty much. But then, okay, so then Cobra Commander uh is broken out of prison by Storm Shadow and Firefly, and then they're like, what we're gonna do is we're going to, the plot is what they're going to do, is they're going to frame G.I. Joe for blowing up a bunch of stuff that they were probably going to blow up anyway, and then they're going to install Cobra as the United States government's premier security force. Because the president... Is is the guy from The Mummy, from the your, first Mummy movie. There's your bridge. Yeah, <laughs> right there. That's right. They should have just said that at the start. <laughs> hey, new viewers, the guy from The Mummy is the president now, but he's also guy from that James Bond movie. Agreed. Here's something I like about this movie. I think the Snake Eyes costume is much better. Oh my God, it's so much. All the costumes are it's better. It's lips free. Yep. Cobra Command is a great costume. Yeah, yeah. There's a few Cobra Commander looks, obviously. They've gone with the silver mask one. Yep. But there's also like the, you know, the jar of jam. You put a jar of jam and you put mm-hmm. like a cloth covering over the top. The cloth yes, yes. covering, like... You know, I know the one, but yeah, yeah. It's got a Cobra logo on it instead of being they didn't Gingham. They did use that one because it looks like a KKK mask. Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And then there's like the bat- robot battle suit version, yeah. which, I mean, maybe we would have gotten G.I. Joe 3, but who knows. Here's the thing, though. Aside from the, like those distinct characters, this feels like two movies because everybody else is a boring generic army person. Mm-hmm. It's just camos and a weird tank and just kind of rolling. <laughs> the hiss tank, o- over- <laughs> Shut up. Just rolling over a field. Like the last battle is just like, we're in this field. Yeah, yeah. Like the last one I think went too far because it was like, it's an underwater submarine and everybody's got a ship and a laser and there's a nano mite. And this one's just like, just on a lawn. Yeah. Just on <laughs> someone's lawn. Just a couple of Humvees on a lawn. See, I think there's a lot of stuff that is better. I think the Storm Shadow Snake Eyes stuff is all pretty solid. Yeah, yeah. And everything else is total generic army shit. Interesting. I thought this struck a better balance, honestly. I think this is indisputably a better movie. Disagree. Whoa. Yeah, I think the well, snake. Well, to disagree. <laughs> I think the Snake Eyes Storm Shadow stuff is better. But speaking of, let's talk about that because there's some genuinely good action sequences between those two. Yeah. Like the fighting alone. But then there's a moment where it's just like we're doing ninja stuff on the side of a mountain, and it's fucking amazing. It's really right, good. Right? <laughs> it's I really think that good. Might, I mean, that that is certainly. I don't know if that was directly out of a comic book, but that's certainly like it felt like some like Frank Miller era Daredevil. Yeah. Like he's fighting the hand or whatever, well, which Daredevil, is interesting yeah. because uh, uh, the lady uh, who played Electra uh, played Electra in the uh, Netflix series is also mm. in this as Jinx. Exactly. She probably has a name. It's on the screen, maybe. Yeah, here it is. Wow. Yeah, but I think that was really cool. Like ninjas swinging across. They're cutting them into the ravine. There's an avalanche. It's just good stunt work all around. Also, Storm Shadow's in a bag and they're just smashing him against a rock. <laughs> yes, yeah, that's right. <laughs> that's really yeah. good. Should we put a helmet on him first? Nah, the bag will protect him. It's probably <laughs> fine. This canvas bag. <laughs> and they're like, Cobra thinks they're going to win, but we've got an ace up our sleeve. A big bag of Storm Shadow soup. <laughs> just pour it out. <laughs> And then we get some Storm Shadow origin. Now, yeah. he's not really a guy in the comics or the show. I looked this up that normally switches sides, but he has... I disagree. Oh, really? Yes. Because oh, I looked it up and they were like, this is, hi- this is highly unusual. So really? Was that not the case? No, he was, he was a Cobra guy for ages. And then, he, then he's... Uh, then, I mean, you know, if you look at the action figures alone, it yeah. starts out Cobra, later, later editions. Wow. Yeah, Joe all around, yeah. I mean, well, there you go. Now right. after like a right fool. <laughs> well, blame, you know... That thing I briefly G.I. Joeniverse.com or whatever it was. But I also enjoyed the flashback of Storm Shadow didn't really kill uh, their master. I knew it was I knew it was you said it last I week. I had a great You guess. said him and another guy. I, I said think. it maybe it was Firefly also, <laughs> but I don't know. They teamed up. They teamed up, yeah. <laughs> they held hands and they fired the gun together. I don't know. But what I thought was hilarious is that he was then trained by Zartan, who wore very unconvincing Asian prosthetics for decades. N- Potentially. Yeah. And what's amazing is they got Arnold Vosloo back for minutes. Not, no, seconds. Yeah, yeah. Because, like, technically he's the president, mm-hmm. but he's not He's not the actor um, doing that. Very briefly, you see him sort of... That's what I mean. ...with his nanomite camouflage. Yeah. Or Destro also. Yeah. 
I'm not going to get you out of this this cage, Destro, because because you weren't very nice in the G.I. <laughs> Joe press conferences from the previous movie, Christopher. I mean, Destro. Nice. You said you hated that movie. It's I mean, a, situation. It's interesting they didn't just recast Destro. Yeah, because you could. He's just a metal face. Just man. a metal face. Doesn't guy, matter, right? does it? Yeah. Uh, we knew what else I thought was interesting is the rock in this, and you don't see this as much uh, anymore. He gets bested hand to hand. Right, never happens anymore. It's in his contract. He's so always got to win. We've talked about it. We've yeah. done videos on it, and it's probably more in relation to the Fast and Furious movies. But if you don't know, essentially in that franchise specifically, everybody has a handler, and they add up the numbers of punches and kicks, and also the amount of times that you fall over. And also, if you fall over, you have to be sitting up so you're not seen as a coward when you fall over, so that everybody on screen hits each other an equal amount of times. It's, yeah. it's fucking lunacy. It is. And they would have to do it both on set and mm. then later in the edit. Exactly. So it's, it's so much work. I, I think there's like exceptions to that because, for example, when he loses to, to Brixton... In, in um, what's that one? Hobbs, Hobbs and Shaw. But I think also they're like, no, he's got super mutant nanite technology. Yeah, so yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that's that's why he lost that particular fight. Mm. But in the end, he, he won because he threw him off a cliff or whatever happened in that, yeah, yeah. that really good movie. Um, I want to talk about the ending also. I want to swing back around to it, if oh, you yeah. don't mind, Mason. Because they're on that lawn. For the they're, big lawn fight, sure. Yeah, there's like a, there's a fan boat and that's G.I. Joe-esque. <laughs> and people are walking around in their funny costumes or camos, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, he gets the best of... Uh, Ray Stevenson. Ray Stevenson fly, and yeah. he explodes him. That's pretty good. Yeah. But then it's that, weird that Ray Stevenson got on that fan boat. Mm. And he's like, there's another fan boat the Rock could easily chase me with. Yeah. I've got all these explosives on me. Yeah. Should I blow up that fan boat? No, there's no time. There's I just no let time. him get the fan boat. I don't get it. Well, you already bested him once. Oh, I guess that's true, yeah. Yeah. But what I love is they, they defeat everybody and they get medals from the real president or whatever happens and they've all got little berets, which signifies the end of a G.I. Joe situation. That's right. Generally. Yeah. The dress uniform, sure. <laughs> yeah, but then... <laughs> you don't want to see a G.I. Joe movie where they're all prancing about in their dress uniforms for 90 minutes? Well, I want to see a movie where at the end Snake Eyes is in his costume but he's wearing a little beret at the end. As he gets a medal from the president. Was he Was he not at the medal ceremony? He ceremony? was, but I think he's just in costume. Oh, I think. Yeah, right, okay. Yeah, I don't yeah. remember. But they're like, we did it, well done, you saved the world. London exploded. Remember that? Yeah. That was pretty significant. How many millions of people live in that city? Yeah. Just fucking, it rises and falls into the earth. How many chip shops were lost, James? How many chippies? Oh, it's devastating. Right? And the other thing is, they weren't even close to... To stopping that no, from happening. No. They weren't even in the, probably on the same continent at that point. It's fascinating that a lot of these movies, is, there must have been, like in the production office, mm. like a whiteboard of like, let's brainstorm some cities we could destroy and nobody would complain about it. I think the problem is as well, you need a significant city. You're not going to do the US, yeah, right? Yeah. And you can't do France because they did Paris briefly in the last movie. So they went, uh, <laughs> what's, what's, that, what's that big clock that everybody knows? Yeah, what's yeah. that big wheel that everybody knows? Ah, like, the Melbourne Star. Exactly. <laughs> they should have blown up the Melbourne Star in Docklands. The Melbourne Star is slowly destroying itself, Mason. It's true. Through lack of maintenance and poor planning. Uh, GI Joe production team. If you if you're making a sequel and you wanna you wanna need blow, some, you, need some, wanna, uh, you know some significant uh, come landmarks. On, come on, blow up somebody in Australia. We love it. We yeah. love, we're like, there's the thing. There's the thing. <laughs> we love pointing at a thing. There's, there's the there's Melbourne's Royal Botanic Gardens oh, being destroyed by a gone. satellite weapon. <laughs> so that's uh, that's fun. Speaking of fun, and by fun I mean a man who's potentially never cared. Mm -hmm. Bruce Willis yes, shows right. up in this as the original G.I. Joe. And we know that because somebody says it to him or he says it. Yeah. I don't know. It seems as if they filmed it in his house. Yeah, he's, he's in three locations. It's in his no, house. Is he? Well, he's in his house. <laughs> yep. And then there's the bit where he rescues the president. So he's there for that. Yeah. And then there's a bit outside his house. Outside a house. I think that's green screen. And also there's a bit where There's he's definitely the some green screen. When he's in, the back of, yeah. he's in the back of a truck firing a big gun, that's definitely green screen. Yeah. He was lying on his couch. <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> but you, though, had a... Had a um, are fascinated. Well, we both are about the uh, the evolution of Bruce Willis. Yeah, that, we we long has been the Hollywood scuttlebutt. I've, I've not seen a lot of documented evidence, but a lot of people have a theory mm. that Bruce Willis, modern era Bruce Willis, generally speaking, will will only work on any given movie yep. for a day and for a million dollars. Yes. Now I looked into this, mm -hmm. did a lot of research. I watched interviews for him for this, and he's like, "I love GI Joe and I love action movies," and I'm like. You've stopped saying those things, haven't you? Right. <laughs> but no, no, in every interview, James, he still says, I love G.I. Joe. <laughs> 
<laughs> so I looked around. I had a bit of a poke around the internet. Yeah. Um, Gave it a bit of an internet poke around. I did. And it's I, time for James's internet poke around. Bloop, bloop. So this is an article from The Mirror in 2013. The Daily Mirror? That's, it just says The Mirror. Okay, right. It might be Bruce Willis talking into a mirror. Do you think I it might know. be an enchanted mirror? Could be. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> Who's the most disillusioned actor of them all? Oh, it's me still. <laughs> it's still Bruce Willis. <laughs> So he says, I'm very clear with who I am. I work on all sorts of films, but the action movies are the ones that generate the most revenue. I like to earn lots of money from those, but I do all types, small productions, mega projects, medium sized, even science fiction. That's right. Yeah. But the, uh, the idea behind this payday though is, I don't know if you remember this, but he actually turned down $3 million for four days work on Expendables 3 because he wanted $4 million. Because he was in the previous two? It was in one of them at least. Okay, right, I think right. they go into a church and Bruce Willis is like, I'm also in action movies. And and the three of them. And I love G.I. Joe. <laughs> <laughs> so Stallone was like, hey, man, you want $3 million yeah. for four days work? And he's like, well, that's not $4 million for four days yeah. work. I shan't do it. So that's kind of, there was some bad blood there. Stallone's talked about how he's like unprofessional and not cool and all those kinds okay. of things. So there was, was a bit of hoo-ha. Oh, yeah, at I the bet. time, yeah, a yeah. bit of a hullabaloo, oh, sure. if you don't mind me yeah. saying so. So I think that's where that idea of the payday comes from. But I also think that $1 million a day thing is fairly accurate. Oh, yeah. 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 Anyways, Mason, let's have a little chat. In this segment, I like to call... Am I getting fired? Is that what the segment's called? Am I being fired from this? I don't want to have a little chat with anyone. It's just a casual... It's more of an assessment. Oh, I don't like this. I don't like where this is going. Okay, here's something I liked. I like that little hot hands tool they used at the start to melt the fence. Yeah, the fence melting hot hands, sure. I mean, I guess it's... Better than set a set of tin wire, snips, yeah, wire that, cutters that yeah. don't require any battery source or anything. Whatever, <laughs> yeah. that's great too. Yeah. Uh, I like Firefly's little fireflies, and I also like that he has a, a bike that breaks up into lots of rockets. Great, right? Good stuff. How do you how do you get that built? <laughs> was it a was it a, it's a custom job, right? I guess so. I yeah. mean, it would have to be. Yes. I don't think you could get them off the shelf. Sure. After the release of the movie. Uh, Harley Davidson's was like, you, you want a you want a bike you want a bike that'll turn into rockets? Well, well, you get one. We're well, limited edition, 100, only hundred made. All hundred owners died. It's, yeah, no doubt. Uh, here's something I found fascinating. Roadblock was actually supposed to be in the first movie played by Common. Huh? Yeah. Surpri- but in this movie, yes. James, yeah. the Blind Master is played by the Rizza of that the Wu Tang Clan. Bobby Digital, Prince Rakim, Prince Delight. Oh my God. Bobby Dynamite, the Rizza Rector, Bobby Boulders, Bob the Builder. He's got a lot of nicknames. He does. He certainly does. Yeah. And he's a fan of like martial arts, isn't yeah, he? Yeah, he, he's he a directed a movie stuff. called yeah. The Man with the Iron Fist. I never saw that. Is that good? It's I hope it's got fun. some good action, yeah. right? Yeah, good stuff. And I also just wanted to mention, uh, just in passing, it's not a minigun. No, it's a heavy machine gun. It's yeah. a 50 caliber heavy machine gun that Roadblock is using. That is correct. Everybody who watches these videos knows that you love a minigun minute. That's correct. But you will not for a second assess a gun <laughs> that is not a minigun. One barrel, for sure, James. Why even bother? Ugh. Rather no barrels. Right? Just a just a zero barrel gun, you pull the trigger, it blows your hands off. I'd <laughs> rather be using one of those, quite frankly. Uh, I also think this movie, it goes for a more of a Transformers kind of ending, because it has like a knockoff Linkin Park kind of track yeah, it does, as yeah. things are wrapping up. Ladies and gentlemen, the G.I. Joe. But I think the idea was, we can still get this going, this can still be Transformers-esque, yeah. but this is too generic okay. to kind of take off. As I said, there's good stuff, but it's in two separate movies. I, yeah, you know no, what you're I mean? absolutely right. You yeah. need to lean into the silliness and the costumes, you know? Mm, yeah. I don't mean, like, make it silly and wacky. Yeah, I mean, yeah. just do it like the MCU, I guess. And that's sure. easy to say. Just do what Marvel <laughs> just do, did. Just do what Marvel did. The thing that every other <laughs> studio was attempting to do, yeah, and only one succeeded at, ultimately. Yeah, just do that, I reckon, yeah. No, you're right, because, you know, ultimately... While the main three were Roadblock, Lady J, and Third Guy, yeah, I didn't really feel like they were the comic book equivalents exactly. of Roadblock, Lady J, and Third Guy. Yeah, give them, give them more colourful characters. Give them some more hot hands gadgets. Yep, give them some, you know, a little bit more. But I mean, overall, I did think this was an improvement. But and maybe Snake Eyes will be too. I think there's a balance that can be struck between the two. Yeah, and we'll know by the time GI Joe, uh, Snake Eyes, Snake Eyes is just a boy. He's just That's a right. boy who can mm. still talk. Yes. Yeah. 
Uh, speaking of, mm-hmm. guess what? We've covered that movie, haven't we, Mason? Which one? The Snake Eyes. Snake yeah, Eyes. let's get on our podcast, The Weekly Planet. Our podcast, The Weekly Planet. Unless we went into another lockdown and we didn't do it. That's correct, But yes. we very much plan to do it. And if we didn't go into a lockdown, that is out by now and linked below. And maybe you're like... You have a podcast, but do you have like a private subscription service that's like a Patreon tier, except you, you control it more and Patreon doesn't take a big chunk of that? Yeah, we do actually. And it's very shady. Thank you very much. <laughs> We're quite proud of how shady and not transparent it is. It's very opaque. It's the most it's the most opaque payment processor on the internet, quite frankly. It's like the mask of a Cobra Commander, but not in the first movie, in the second, in the second movie. movie. It's highly reflective. And definitely not the third option, the Ku Klux Klan version we said earlier. It's not that it's one. It's not that one. I no. want to, I want to no. emphasize strictly that it is definitely not that. No. Uh, but it's called BigSandwich.co. We do bonus podcasts. We do movie commentaries. Videos go up there early including Caravan of Garbage. Ben edits them. They go up early, don't they? That's right. They're terrific. Anyways, if you've got a suggestion, great, we want to hear it, but here's a hint towards next week. So that's it. What, are we some kind of suicide squad? Um, Subscribe if you want. Please do. Even subscribe if you don't want to. (laughs) Right? Just push through that urge. Yeah, that's right, to just close your browser and do something, anything else. No, no. Click subscribe instead. Even if you hated this, hit the the bell. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. You'd really be showing us up if you did that. Yeah. We'd really feel bad about it. Teach us a lesson. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, uh, I'm at Mr. Sunday Movies on Twitter. I'm at Wikipedia Brown on Twitter. See you on the next one. Grab that jammy, guys. We'll see you next week. Pork chop sandwiches. You should look it up. You fucking look it up. I did, and I loved it. I will also look it up. Yeah, nice. (laughs) 